Good day to all. Today in this lecture, we are going to see on the determination of single yarn strength. The procedure and the descriptions are based on Indian standards 1670-1991. The aim of this experiment is to first determine the breaking load and then elongation at break of the given single sample of yarn. <coughs> this single yarn denotes that it is not a bunch of yarn. Okay, you do not have a bunch of yarn. You have only one single yarn. This single yarn may be a double yarn or a ply yarn or a, it, it means a single, it is not a strand. It does not have a lee. Lee will have a, a, a n number of yarns and it is together tensed. It is not a bundle. It is a single yarn. That is what is mentioned by this single yarn. It does. Uh, it accommodates a, a, a single ply yarn, a single double yarn, or an, a cord. Anything can be tested for single yarn strength. And after determining the breaking load and elongation at break. Then we need to calculate the tenacity of the given sample of yarn. So, uh, uh, this is the aim of the experiment. So, let us look into the various terminologies used uh, in this experiment and uh, understand uh, them before going into the experiment. The breaking force or breaking load or breaking strength that is uh, a parameter that is measured in the instrument. And the second thing is the elongation. It is also measured in the single yarn strength instrument. And third is a calculated parameter tenacity or specific stress at break. So these are the three important terminologies. And along with that, we have the count of yarn. You already know what is count and you can refer to the previous experiments on what is count and how a lee is to be prepared and it is to be weighed and the length weight relationship is found and the count is calculated in any you can refer to csp uh, demonstration uh, for understanding this better so let us look into the definitions of these uh, terms which are used here currently for this experiment so the first i mentioned on breaking load uh, or breaking force or breaking strength it is the load at which the specimen breaks. Uh, it, it, it is a break or sometimes it may be a maximum load. Sometimes the specimen will break after the maximum point. So this will uh, tell the maximum load uh, if the break happens after maximum. So these uh, terms uh, had already been defined. I'm just uh, giving uh, you a glimpse of these terms. So it is the maximum tensile force recorded on the uh, test test uh, uh, tester load uh, indicator uh, during the breaking of the specimen or during the test of the specimen. The units uh, for uh, this measurement may be in newton, maybe in centinewton, maybe in grams, maybe in lbs, and maybe in kgs. The load unit in the instrument may be in any one of these uh, units. Next is the elongation. Elongation is the increase in length of the specimen from its starting length. So this is the length and I'm having um, I'm holding my two hands which means there are two jaws and it increases. The length increases and this increase in length is called the elongation and it is denoted in centimeter, meter or in, and inches and it may be converted into percentage. Next is the calculated term, uh, term uh, tenacity, which is an important term, which is nothing but the specific stress at break. So, the, it is the ratio of breaking force or breaking strength divided by the linear density of the specimen. So, the break, the elongation is not here. You can uh, delete that one. The elongation is not here. So, tenacity is breaking force. By, uh, the usual unit of uh, denoting uh, tenacity is uh, gram per tex. 
breaking force measured in grams or if you measure in some other unit it, will be, it is to be converted into grams and linear density if it is measured in some other terms it has to be converted to ticks and tenacity has to be denoted in gram per ticks sometimes the other units uh, are, are also used like gram per denier newton per tick centinewton per tick are also used to denote tenacity or specific stress at break so one another terminology which i'm uh, which, which showed here is rkm this is also used uh, in citra norms and uh, and many other uh, industries uh, they term it as rkm it is also a notation of single yarn strength rkm stands for resis kilometer in german and resistance kilometric in french so this rkm is uh, from these uh, uh, foreign words uh, so it is nothing but the kilometers of yarn for break so uh, when you when you have a uh, length of yarn uh, how many kilometers of its length of its own weight that the yarn can withstand is called as rkm a length in kilometers at which the, uh, the sample will have some length uh, and that, the weight of that length which the maximum that the yarn can withstand is called as rkm it is uh, nothing but the uh, tenacity is equal to tenacity in gram per tick because a uh, tick is 1 uh, km grams per 1 uh, km so uh, how many kilometers of yarn uh, and the weight at which it breaks is the rkm it is also the breaking force in grams divided by linear density in ticks so both terminologies are used commonly every word tenacity term is used rkm is also used in uh, industries earlier now it is uh, becoming lesser but still citra norms uh, uh, give their uh, norms in terms of rkm which is nothing but the tenacity so the approximations for converting from csp to rkm is given it is an approximation so you can see two different things rkm is equal to lee strength or lee csp divided by uh, 150 or 7 into lee csp divided by 1000 it doesn't mean that 150 is equal to 1000 by 7 there is a slight approximation it is already told that it is approximate so you can from your csp you can csp is a common uh, measurement done in the industries and to and they try to find from the csp value what is the tenacity so tenacity is an important term uh, because uh, this uh, tells how many bar breaks will happen in the barking so if your yarn is uh, better uh, is having higher tenacity uh, then it, uh, the bar breaks will be less in the barking Uh, process and in the further process sizing will improve the strength but still the single yarn strength should be to some extent so that the yarn will not break lee strength is not a better terminology for the warp breaks because uh, lee strength gives a bunch of yarns if one single yarn is not having strength then also warp break will happen so single yarn tenacity is a better terminology uh, to determine how many bar breaks will happen in the further processes after the spinning process next uh, uh, we can see that the parameters found by experimenting are uh, breaking load in the single yarn strength instrument breaking elongation also in the single yarn strength test and then linear density you need two things wrap reel and weighing balance to determine linear density and finally the calculation uh, term is tenacity let us now go into the experiment procedure so uh, i will list it in steps it is a very simple experiment it has only three steps the first step is to determine the count of the yarn uh, using uh, wrap reel and weighing balance uh, this uh, uh, we already saw in the csp uh, experiment uh, again further we will look into how to determine the count of yarn using the lee, uh, wrap reel and the weighing balance again uh, we can see to that next step 2 is the determination of the single yarn strength uh, 
that is the breaking load and breaking elongation using single Leon strength test and third is the uh, calculation of breaking tenacity in gram, gram per text and finally the calculating the average standard deviation and uh, you can also compare it with the uh, citra norms and see uh, in which standards uh, the yarn is actually uh, whether it is in uh, 5% to 20% or 10% standards which uh, top uh, is the yarn quality in top uh, 5% 10% or 20% of the mills producing the same kind of yarn so this can be done at the final stage so the experiment has two uh, two steps and the third is the calculation calculation part so first then let us go into the determination of the linear density of yarn and count and or the count of yarn which can be found using the wrap reel and the weighing balance so first is the preparation of lee and determination of the counts let us see the wrap reel working if we're going to the wrap reel working we need to know uh, what is a leaf a lee as uh, as mentioned earlier in the uh, count strength product or csp tester lee is a length of yarn of 120 yards in a circular form you, and it is prepared in a circular form so uh, the uh, wrap reel circumference is 1.5 yards so in the wrap reel we have to set how many revolutions Yes, it is 120 length of the lee divided by the circumference of wrap reel. Length of lee is 120 yards, circumference is 1.5 yards. So, 80 revolutions have to be set in the wrap reel instrument so that we can prepare the lee. This is the front view of the wrap reel. See, you have the plug at the back here. This is the tensioner. This is the guide. This is the circumference of this is 1.5 yards. This is the side view, right side view of the wrap reel. This is the creel where you keep the cone. This is the guide. Here you have the switch here. You can switch it on, plug main. And then the instrument main is switched on. Now it automatically starts and rotates. You have to be careful. The here is where you set for the number of revolutions. You have to press the button set. Then this number can be increased by pressing the upper arrow. And decreasing by down arrow. So for 120 yards of Lee, you have to set 80 revolutions because the circumference is 1.5 yards. So So this has this has to be set. This is the first step in the instrument. This is the uh, guide where the uh, cops can be placed or the cone can be placed. From here, uh, the, before starting the instrument in the spikes, there is a spike which is adjustable. So the, this is where you can adjust for the easy removal of yarn from the wrap reel. See, this is unlock, lock, unlock, press and lock. So this is how the circumference of this is 1.5 yards. Take the cone, place it in the position like this take a yarn end and pass it the yarn is taken passed through the guide holes and through the tensioner this is the tensioner then again a guide and see there is a place for keeping the yarn the yarn is wound, the edge of the yarn is wound here and the extra thread can be removed. 
So this is how it is kept. Similarly, the other next sample is taken through the guide tensioner. Again, another guide and then it is uh, placed, it is uh, wound in the edge. You can see here. This is in lock position. You have to intuit that before start. This is unlock, lock. So now start in the instrument here. Start by pressing this button before that ensure that it is in start, not blinking. The light should not blink. Set it and there should be no blink and then start without having your hands here. So let it continue for the 80 revolutions. So it is the number is increasing. You can, it starts from 0 and it will end at 80 revolutions. 80 revolutions. So it has stopped after 80. Cut the yarn. Join the first and the last edge. And, and Join it with the lead. The first and last edge of the yarn are taken and wound there. Loosen the spike by unlocking and take the lead out like this. And rotate the two ends in opposite direction. And now the lead is prepared. And it is kept in the lead tray. The lead tray where one is there, the first sample. Now the removal of the second sample. This is taken from the uh, right side of the machine uh, to give a better understanding on how it is removed. So the end is broken and moved and it is found onto the lee. And it is removed like this and the two edges are rotated like this in opposite direction and the second prepared D is kept in the tray. Next is the determination of the weight of D after preparation of E. Using weighing balance, weight of D is found in grams. The length of 120 yards that is 80 revolutions. The sample is prepared. The lee is prepared and kept in the lee tray. And now the next work is to weigh it. The length preparation is done. Now weigh because count is length weight relationship. So for a particular length what of 120 yards, what is the weight? So we are going to weigh the sample. Switch on the weighing balance. Like this, let it stabilize and show zero. Now, from the lead ray, the sample is taken and placed in the weighing balance. The weight is in grams 1.65. After determining the weight of the lead, the count has to be determined. Count uh, first we can calculate in any or directly we can calculate in X. Here I am telling you how to determine X and then uh, I am sorry and how to determine in any and then converting it into X. Any is the number of 840 yards in 1 LB. Any is nothing but English count or cotton count. So for an indirect system this is the conversion uh, factor. Uh, you can see for this uh, in the CSP tester, uh, the count of yarn uh, NE is equal to 64.8 divided by uh, weight of the E in grams. E is 120 yards. So this is the formula. So in this experiment, we have already found the weight of the E. So the weight of the E is 1.64 grams. So count in NE is equal to 64.8. Eight divided by 1.64 grams which is the weight of the which is equal to 
39.5 Ni. So, the count is 39.51. Now, let us convert this Ni into text. So, determination of text. Uh, count in text is equal to 590.5 divided by count in Ni. Uh, you would have already known about the count conversions in the count experiment. So, I am just uh, giving the formula alone. So, uh, 590.5 divided by 39.51, you get 14.95, uh, which is the text of the yarn. So, this is used in this experiment because tenacity is calculated by uh, gram uh, breaking force in grams divided by count in text. After determining the count in text, it has to be written in the top of the tablet column. Uh, this is the tablet column. You will find the breaking load in LBS and the elongation of the single yarn in centimeter. These two will be found in the experiment and you will calculate tenacity for which the count is required. So, this count is noted on the top of the tablet column for sing single yarn strength tester. Now, let us go into the second step. The first step is over uh, using wrap rail and weighing balance. The length and weight of the leaf was uh, weight of the leaf was found, and the uh, count was determined in text. The second step is to determine the breaking strength and elongation using the single yarn strength tester. Here we have used CRE type electronic tester for the determination of single yarn strength. There are other instruments, CRT type mechanical instruments, CR. Uh, uh, T type um, motorized instrument, CRE type electronic instrument. We are now using CRG, constant rate of extension type uh, electronic tester for this uh, uh, determination of single yarn strength. It, is, it doesn't mean that all the testers will follow the same principle. Each tester will have a different principle. Here we are going to see on CR. E type electronic instrument. Let us see the instrument description and working. This is the full view of the instrument. The technician Srinivasan Anna is standing nearby. Uh, I made him stand nearby the instrument uh, so that you will have an idea of how long the machine is. So, from this, see if he is uh, 6 to 6.5 6 feet tall, then the instrument uh, height will be 6 feet. So, to get a view of the height of the instrument, uh, the, the Anna is standing nearby. Now, let us go to a closer look. So, you have the various parts here. The bottom is the motor. You have the bo bottom jaw here. You have the top jaw here. And this is the elongation scale. This is the load scale. This is the switch for switching on the load scale and the motor below. From this motor, by engaging here, you this bottom jaw. Uh, moves down. A closer look going nearby the instrument. This is the plug. This is the uh, switch which you have to switch on for the display. Switch the right side switch on the switch. After switching the main switch, switch on the side switch here. So this is the display for the a uh, load scale. You can see the display. Uh, for LBS it is 0. To change to kgs you have to switch. Uh, you have to press this button. Yellow color button. It will change from Newton LBS to kgs. And uh, you have by pressing this 0 button. It will come back to 0. And this is automatic manual. Now it is automatic is turned on so that when the yarn cuts it will stop automatically. Next you can see the scale on the left hand side. Here this is the elongation scale. At the start of the 
uh, experiment this elongation scale this pointer will be to zero the scale is attached to the uh, bottom jaw so this is the uh, pointer for measuring the elongation uh, measurement in the elongation scale this pointer does not move during the experiment the scale will move this is this pointer is attached to the top jaw this is the top jaw i am moving away from the machine uh, to show you both the top jaw top jaw is the one which we saw now this is the bottom jaw this one is the bottom jaw let us have a close look of the bottom jaw now i am now moving from the top jaw to the bottom jaw slowly you can see a scale here this is your bottom jaw this is your top jaw this is the side view of the top jaw and the side view of the bottom jaw this side and this side top jaw and the bottom jaw so this is the guide nearby and this is the uh, holder for placing the yarn so this is the gauge scale i'm showing it again so you can see the scale here this shows the gauge length here see this is the gauge length which shows here distance between top and jaw bottom jaw this bottom jaw is connected to a screw mechanism which is connected to the motor and the motor gets drive from this switch here see the gauge length of the instrument distance so it is so you can see on the scale it is 30 here it is 35 at the bottom here 35 30 25 so this is the bottom jaw this is the gauge length here is the gauge length so 30 cm is the gauge length this is your bottom jaw so 30 cm is the gauge length this is where you engage and disengage the bottom jaw to the screw mechanism so see this is moved up and engaged so after engagement you can see the bottom jaw is moving down can you see the bottom jaw moving down disengage it does not move so, so these are the things that have to be ensured before the uh, actual loading of the specimen and taking the test which is uh, measurement of the distance between the top and jaw, bottom jaw uh, by uh, checking to that if the gauge length is at 30 cm this is the uh, usual uh, uh, distance that is to be maintained for a single yarn strength tester it is 30 cm or 30 and uh, 300 mm or 12 inches approximately so this is the gauge length and you have to check the gauge length there is adjustments and uh, uh, you have to see to that it is at 300 mm next is the bottom jaw movement the speed of the bottom jaw or uh, traverse is to be set at 300 mm per minute so in this instrument the motor is set at that speed and there is no alterations uh, that can be done in this instrument in some other instruments if there are provisions for changing the uh, speed of the bottom jaw here it is automatically 300 mm per minute or 30 cm per minute or approximately 12 inches per minute all are one and the same next is to check the load scale, load scale if it is at zero or press the zero check button and next the check the elongation scale it should uh, the pointer at the top jaw should match with the zero of the elongation scale the elongation scale is attached to the uh, bottom jaw so if not you have to move the uh, disengage move to the top and see to that it is at zero position so these have to be checked or uh, they have to, these have to be set before the actual testing in the uh, instrument now let us look into the procedure or the actual testing of the specimen in this cre type electronic instrument before mounting the yarn in the creel and in the jaws 
this has to be in off position the motor has to be in on off position it has to be switched on only after mounting the yarn in the top and the bottom top so ensure that it is in uh, off position then come this uh, this part has to be moved up to ensure zero position of the bottom jaw see move up see move up and stop it here and then engage this one by turning it to the right side now this is the um, holder where you have to place the cone the clone cone is placed in the holder on the left side of the bottom jaw this is your bot jaw and this is the left side of the bottom jaw where you place the holder this the yarn uh, is in the cone which is there in the holder this yarn has to be taken through this guide and then to the top jaw so the top jaw position uh, the elongation scale is at zero if that bottom jaw is in zero position, then this elongation scale will be in zero. This pointer has to be in zero position. The yarn has to be taken from this cone. See the yarn is unwound. Taken through the guide. This is a guide and tensioner. So this is the guide and the tensioner. A pre-tension is applied here. This is passed. And then let us have a side look. This is your top jaw here. The yarn is here. See you have. See move it to the bottom jaw. Mounting in the bottom jaw. See. See the yarn is turned. And. Tightened. Tightened. And. The top. The yarn is tight. The top jaw is held. And the yarn is mounted in the top jaw. Can you see the mounting? See the mounting. And then the yarn is tightened and the outside end from the cone is cut. This is how it looks. The yarn is mount in between the top and bottom jaw. The gauge length is 30 cm and the gauge length is here at this position. We already saw the gauge length. Uh, this is where from the yarn was taken and mounted. Now switch on the plug and engage it. Switch it on. Switch this on. Switch the motor on after engaging can see the yarn will cut the bottom jaw will move and the yarn has cut already now go to see the you can the yarn is cut see you can see the yarn uh, is not there in between the cut end that you can do here immediately you have to know uh, you have to stop the instrument here as soon as the uh, thing is cut it you have to stop the instrument and then note the note the load reading here so if the no load reading is 0 0.63 and it is in lbs after noting the load reading you have to note the elongation reading so see the elongation reading here yeah See, you can see it is uh, uh, 3.9 centimeter. Can you see that uh, this is 6, 5, 4, 3, 2 and 1. It is 3.9 centimeter here. This is the tabular column for uh, single yarn strength testing. In this instrument, we have measured the breaking load in LBS and the elongation in centimeter. 
So the tabular column uh, is like this. Otherwise, the, the units can be changed according to the type of instruments. Then uh, the breaking load is to be converted into grams and uh, finally the tenacity has to be calculated. Now uh, the measured uh, values for load and the elongation uh, which we have now noted is LBS reading is 0.63 in the display at the top and the elongation scale the pointer uh, showed 3.9 centimeter. So these are the two readings that are noted. Now uh, let us uh, see the calculations. So the uh, breaking load is 0.63 LBS. We have to convert this LBS to grams. The conversion factor is breaking load in LBS into 453.6. This is the conversion factor. So 0.63 into 453.6 we get 285.8 grams. This reading has to be noted in the tabular column. So this is the reading which we have to uh, note. Now let us calculate the tenacity. Tenacity, the breaking load is 0.63 and we have calculated in grams. Tenacity is the breaking force in grams divided by linear density in tex. We know already 285.8 grams. So the numerator is that. Then linear density was already calculated. It is uh, in x it is 14.95. So substituting the values in for tenacity to 85.8 divided by 14.95 we get 19.1 gram per x. So this is the tenacity of the first uh, sample that uh, of the sample for the, in the first reading we have calculated the tenacity. This has to be noted in the tabular column. Similarly uh, n number of readings for one sample we have to take at least 12 to 20 readings for a single a sample of yarn. So these are these were the readings are taken after uh, for the same sample uh, for different readings are uh, given here. Now we have to calculate the uh, breaking load in grams for this and then the tenacity. And then the average of uh, breaking load in grams uh, in LBS, the average for tenacity and elongation and standard deviation and CV are also to be calculated. The formula for standard deviation small s is equal to root of sigma x minus x bar the whole square divided by n minus 1. n is the number of uh, samples. Here n is 12. We have taken 12 readings for this sample. CV percentage is equal to standard deviation divided by mean into 100. All is for sample. So with this uh, we can calculate the various values uh, for the taken readings. So these are the various readings that uh, is uh, shown in, uh, in the Excel sheet. Multiplying these values into 453.6 you get these values. And next by uh, the tenacity values are calculated by dividing the breaking load in gram divided by 14.95 which is the text. So these are the tenacity values uh, calculated. Now after calculating the tenacity then the average has to be calculated which is the sum of all the 12 readings divided by 12 and then SD using the formula already set and CV is calculated and these have to be presented like this in the final value. So this average, this has to be filled in here and next the CV of the same has to be filled in here and similarly the elongation average and CV has to be filled. This has to be reported in the results. The results have to be presented like this. So these are the calculated values at the bottom. And uh, along with the values, the type of tester that is CRE type electronic tester was used for the this performing this test. The gauge length used was 30 mm and testing speed was 300 mm per minute. So all these have to be mentioned in the test report. And this these values can be compared with the Citra norms and uh, we can see whether this yarn uh, is in 5% standards or 10 or 20 or 25% uh, top uh, in which category this 
uh, cone of yarn or cup of yarn lies. So this can also be done at the later stage. There are C, R, T type instruments also. And you can watch uh, n number of videos uh, available for the same. One video uh, link is posted here. And this is one more uh, mechanical type tester, which is uh, there in the laboratory. You can see it is totally mechanical. Uh, it is mounted in the wall. And uh, the speed, the bottom jaw movement is mechanical. And the load measurement is uh, via pendulum. Even the pendulum is not there uh, as it is uh, of less weight. So the load scale and elongation scale you can view. This is the uh, load scale. And if you put a pendulum here at this place, you can note the readings at the uh, at the bottom of the scale. There is readings on the top and also the bottom. This is the elongation scale. So, n type of instruments are available. Uh, but the principle uh, behind one and the other are different. But you will get a slight according to the variations you will get a slight differences not much deviations in the value.